All right, so let's do a video with definite integrals here. Let's work on an example problem. Now, before we get started, just preliminarily, let me say, uh, if you're unsure about the difference uh, between definite versus indefinite integrals, uh, go ahead and check out my video on this same playlist on my YouTube channel, uh, integrals definite versus indefinite, or something along those lines, indefinite versus definite, and that should clear everything up to understand the mathematical basis of what we're talking about here. So a quick recap for the purposes of this video. We're talking about a definite integral, so that just means we are interested in the integral over some interval, a to b, of some function f of x dx, and this is going to give us a value of area, which is going to tell us how much space from a to b underneath a curve of that function is taken up how much how much space is in this little area right here so that's what we're interested in for the purposes of our definite integral so let's do a really simple first degree polynomial function it's going to be so small you wouldn't maybe recognize it as polynomial just to begin with let's talk about the definite integral from zero oh, let's write that better the definite integral from zero to nine of two t Two t dt. All right. So, uh, what are we going to do here? What do we What do we need to do? What's our first step? All right. Well, steps for uh, definite integrals. The first is let's find our indefinite integral or our antiderivative. Secondly, let's substitute values, and then third, let's find the take the upper limit, the answer from our upper limit of integration, subtract the answer from the lower limit of integration to get our integral, our definite integral. So let's go ahead and uh, start with step number one here, which is uh, indefinite integral. So we need to find the antiderivative. So what do we do? All right, well, 2t, let's just use a, a simple little rule here. We know that when we have anything raised to an exponent, here's a nice little aside, if we have, if we want to take the indefinite integral of x to the nth power, right, uh, dx, then this is just equal to x to the n plus 1 power over n plus 1, right? This is a, a handy little rule for us to have. So uh, let's use that. Okay, so 2t is just 2t raised to the first power, right? Because that doesn't change it. 2t to the first is just 2t, so we're good. We can do that. So since it's 2t to the first power, our x to the n, our n here is just equal to 1. So we're going to have just 2t squared, because n plus 1 up here, and over n plus 1, which is just 2. So 2t squared over 2. All right, well, these 2s, we can just cancel them, right? So all we're left with is t squared. So the indefinite integral over here of 2t dt is just t squared. So let's let's rewrite that better. My apologies. All right. So the indefinite integral of 2t dt is just t squared. So we've got this in our arsenal of information. We can get rid of this. Now, our first step is taken care of. We found the indefinite integral. Now it's time to substitute values. So what do we mean? Well, let's go ahead and start with the upper bound. We'll be substituting this 9 in. So everywhere we see a t in our indefinite integral, we're going to put a 9. So uh, we're just going to have t squared equals, and this is, of course, 9. 9 squared equals 81. So our upper limit of integration is 81. Now we're going to need to do the same thing for our lower limit of integration, which is 0 here. So we're going to have... 0 squared, to the 0 power, that would just be 1, squared, all right. So this is 0 squared, which of course is obviously equal just to 0. So our lower limit of integration is 0. 
All right, what's our next step? We've taken care of substituting values. Now we need to take our upper limit and subtract our lower limit from it, and that'll give us our answer. So let's go ahead and do that. Our upper limit integration is 81. So we have 81. Then we have 0. All right. And 81 minus 0. Man, I'm really going to need to think about this. Might need to go get the calculator out. But I'm pretty sure if I just do some math off the top of my head that this may just be equal to mm, 81. Yeah, so I think that's it. So 81 is our final answer here. We have taken care of upper limit and lower limit uh, subtraction. So now, look, we're done. We know that on the graph of 2t dt, and this is going to, well, why don't we graph this? Let's just see actually what it would look like. Give a, a basic little graph. Uh, there we go. Graph axes. All right, so we're going to, here's, ugh, yuck. Okay, here's 2t. Oh, I think there's a straight line function. Yeah, perfect. So 2t is going to look about like that. And uh, this is going to be our point 0. And we'll say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So 9 is right there. So this is our ninth point. So we'll draw another little line up from 9. Okay. So we know that this is the function f, uh, well, this is just 2t, okay, and uh, this is how much space is right in here, is 81 units squared. What do we do? We took the indefinite integral, which was t squared. We, took, we substituted our values, our 0 and our 9, to get our upper limit and lower limit of integration. Then we subtracted those things, 81 minus 0, to get 81, which told us how much space is in this graph. So we're done.